before we begin, is there anything since last week we kind of finished up our conversation about the church? And don't forget, like as we are talking about the church, we're specifically talking about in the context of that is our our weapon. Like the church is our weapon against uh, the world. The world would be this um, anti-Christian culture uh, where people that have distorted thoughts and distorted ideas come together to embrace these distorted thoughts, to embrace these distorted ideas, and support one another in them, creating a culture that is radically opposed to anything that resembles Christianity. And so like our, our weapon against that is the church. And you know, oftentimes we just think of the church as either a place that we go. That, By the way, I just want to go ahead and say, there is a number of ways that you can think of the church. Thinking of the church as a place where you go, that is the worst way to think of the church. Like, like go ahead and just kick that one out. Like, I'm telling you, there is a, you can look at church as a discipline. Yes, that is a good way to look at church. You, can look, you ought to be looking at church as the people. That is a healthy way to be looking at the church. But to consider this building, the church, so unhealthy. And, and we, we've got to get away from that. Um, so uh, this, that, this is a building, and that's where it stops, right? Like, I mean, uh, you, if you'll remember, one of the passages that we talked about was, uh, you know, Jesus as he is talking to Peter and talking about giving him the keys to the kingdom and telling Peter that the gates of Hades are not going to be able to overcome the church. And uh, golly, what, how nuts would that be for God, Jesus, to make such a promise to not just to Peter but to all of us and we have a tornado or something like that take out the building. It's like, oh, well, the church is gone. You know, like this is stupid. So uh, we like that is something that um, I do think that's, that is generational. I don't necessarily see that in younger generations identifying church with a place, um, but it is something that has been in our culture for a long time that we all kind of just got to, as we think of church, we've got to process, all right, it's not a place. It's the people. It's a discipline. There's a, a couple ways we can look at it, but we can't look at it as, as, a, as a place necessarily. Um, any other thoughts or anything that, that may have come to your mind since last week? Anything at all? Okay. Well, let's get started with our um, let's get started with our new uh, thing. So, the three truths of God that we got to remember: God is spirit, God is light, God is love. God is spirit, and God is light are going to be huge. Those two truths are going to be huge for our conversation tonight and next week. Um, we're going to start our conversation on doing battle against the devil. All right. We have three enemies. The devil, the flesh, and the world. We've already talked about the world and how we combat that. Uh, tonight we start our conversation about the devil because our battlefield with the devil takes place in the mind. That, that's where it happens. Um, the devil can do a lot of things. Um, heck, I mean, you look at a situation like Job, he can do a lot of things to your body. Uh, but, but the real place where the devil is going to do the most work on a Christian and a non-Christian <coughs> is in the mind, okay? And uh, we did talk about, when we talked about the devil briefly, that you know it does appear both on a scientific, philosophical, and biblical level. Uh, so we have kind of a, a, a three-way confirmation there that Satan is, or demons are, able to put thoughts into the mind even of a believer, both indirectly and directly. However, what we also talked about, just to remind y'all before we get into today's uh, kind of discipline, uh, that the devil cannot make us obey those thoughts. Uh, and that's the big differentiating factor there is uh, some people are like, oh, so you're saying that the devil can make it? No, the devil can't make you do anything. But he can really mess with, with a mind, and that's why our, our discipline for today is so important. So today we're talking about meditation. Um, before we, uh, oh, I missed that. Sorry about that. Before we get into meditation, who here would say that you, I mean, you don't even have to give any details. It's just okay. Like that you either are currently practicing some form of meditation or you have in the past practiced some form of meditation. Is that something that anybody in here would be, say like, yeah, I've, I've done some of that. Anybody? Okay. Got a couple nods. All right. Got a couple head shakes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and make a claim here. I could be wrong. I could be off. 
I'm going to make the claim, though, that everybody in here has practiced meditation to some degree. All right. Um, and we're going to talk about those in just a second. So uh, before you kind of get in, I think that this is one of those sessions. There's there's two sessions that we're going to do during this our time together, these 12 weeks, that you're going to be like, man, these are these are tough and they're hard and I'm not sure about them. Um, this is one of them tonight, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you up front before you get to like uh, before you, you, you kind of get your mind blown a little bit or whatever, whatever you're reaction is going to be just I, everybody in here is already doing some meditating so our goal tonight is and you know with the homework this week is really just to to kind of bring some uh i, I say programming I, I guess that's a good structure. word some structure yeah some structure to the to the meditation so what is meditation let's talk about it really quickly um john i'm sorry richard foster says it is the ability to hear god's voice and obey his word the ability to hear god's voice and obey his word uh, John Mark Comer uh, in Practicing the Way says, it is looking at God, looking at you in love. And so with these two things, without us like reading all of Richard Foster and reading all of John Mark Comer, I just kind of took some of their thoughts and put them together in a definition for us for tonight. And this is kind of what we're doing with our form class. Meditation is entering the quiet place of the soul, allowing God to love you as you consider him, his character, his work, and his will. It is us entering this quiet place of the soul as we meditate on who God is, what He's doing, how He loves us, and it does take effort on behalf of the human. It does. Now here's the, the first thing that nearly everybody, uh, there, there's two um, arguments against Christians practicing meditation. And uh, I, I hear them nearly every time we, I talk about it. Uh, first thing that people say is that is Eastern, that is Buddhist, Hindu, whatever. Uh, we don't need to play with that. And I would say that the way that a Buddhist or a Hindu practices meditation, I'm, I'm in full agreement. The way that they practice meditation, uh, it is, it is uh, their goal in meditation is I'm going to empty my mind to try to reach this place of nirvana, this place of just utter peace where like I'm not thinking about anything. That's not what we want to do with meditation. We want to empty our minds so that way we can be filled with Christ. And so there is a part of Hindu and Buddhist meditation that I would say, yeah, I think that that's great. I just don't think that they take it far enough, and I don't think they believe the right things about it in order for us to be able to affirm it. So we're not talking about this Hindu, Buddhist, kind of Eastern uh, type of, of meditation. The second complaint that I hear about meditation is, hey, we don't need to try this you know, sitting in silence, thinking about God, trying to hear God's voice. If you want to hear God's voice, just read the scripture out loud. That's like, that's like one of the go-to remarks from a lot of people. If you want to hear God's voice audibly, then just open up your Bible and read it out loud. That's God's voice. That's God's word. And it's like, okay, that is, that is one way to meditate. It's through scripture. And we're going to talk about that here in just a second. But for 2,000 years, Christians have made it abundantly clear that that is not the only way we hear from God. And I just want to say this. All right, and this might, you, you might be like, oh, he didn't say that, but I'm, I'm going to. It's coming in three seconds. Three, two, one. The Bible is great. The Bible is good. It is not the only way that God reveals himself to people. It's not. We're going to experience God through prayer. We're going to experience God through meditation. We're going to experience God in nature. We're going to experience God in any number of ways. What is the Bible for us? It is the most clear revelation of God to his people. But it's not the only revelation of God to his people. And the thing about all the different types of ways that God has revealed himself to his people, none of them contradict. And so if we ever do get to a place where we're like, man, I, I feel like I'm getting something over here about God, but it contradicts what I'm, I'm seeing over here, then, then there's a problem there. And either A, you're not hearing from God, or B, you have misinterpreted one of the, one of the types of, of revelation, right? And so we got to be very careful. Like if, if God ever tells somebody um, and, and they say, hey, you know, I, I feel like God kind of spoke to me, communicated with me, um, and uh, he told me blank, and it completely and clearly contradicts what we see in Scripture, you're not hearing from God, you're hearing from Satan. Well, let's just go ahead and call it what it is. Like the devil has put a thought, he's put a lie into your mind, you have believed that thought at this point in time, and now you're in real danger because you are operating within the devil's schemes and not the, the plans and the path of God. 
Um, and, and by the way, that's something that is very common. I, I don't know how many times, you know, people, especially right when marriage gets really tough and people either want a way out of marriage or have, have found a way out of marriage, they'll say something along the lines like, like God just wants me to be happy. And we're just like, mm, well, he's actually made it pretty clear what he wants for you right now. And what you're saying and what the scripture has clearly taught, completely in contradiction. So I don't think you're hearing from God. I think you're hearing from the devil. Um, now, we try to say that a little bit more kindly than that and not quite as sarcastic. But I mean, but that's, that's the reality uh, of, what's, of what's going on right there. So to those two arguments against Christians practicing meditation, those would be just in, in brief. It's a longer conversation. But in brief, that would be the, the response there. A, like, yes. We don't affirm Eastern meditation because Eastern meditation doesn't take it far enough. They try to clear the mind to just be mindless almost. Um, we try to clear the mind so we can be filled. Um, and then C or B, uh, you know, you have the idea of all right, well, you know, Scripture is the only way that we're going to hear from God. It is a way, and probably the primary way that we're going to hear from God, but it's not the only way. And it's not good for us to, to try to deny deny that idea. So, um, with that being said, uh, let's just talk a couple things about what meditation is not. Uh, meditation is not necessarily prayer. And we're going to talk about this more next week. Uh, meditation is a part of prayer, but prayer is two-way communication. Meditation is one-way communication, where we are receiving. And so prayer it incorporates something else, um, but meditation is a part of prayer. I'm, I'm sure that's confusing, and I didn't probably do that very well. Meditation is not Bible study, although Bible study can help with meditation. Meditation is not silence and solitude, although silence and solitude can really help with meditation. And then finally, you know, as we've already talked about, it's not this, this Eastern form of meditation where I'm just clearing out in order to, to just reach nirvana. I'm, I'm trying to actually be filled up with something here. And so, um, you know, there's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of passages that uh, we can look at, but Psalm 119 is one of those passages. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. It says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Uh, whoa, I just, what did I just do? Oh, I repeated myself. With my lips I have told you of all the ordinances of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. I shall delight in your statutes. I shall not forget you. Your word. Now, here's the good thing about Scripture when it comes to meditation. Here's the bad thing. I, I mean, as you can see there, like, there, like Scripture teaches us to meditate. Um, it teaches us to meditate in a couple of ways. Number one, you have passages like this where a, a Bible character, David in particular, is talking about how he meditates. Number two, you see different people in Scripture that meditate. Um, which disciple was it that was like meditating under a tree? Was it Thomas? It was Thomas. Nathaniel. Maybe not Thomas. Maybe Nathaniel. <laughs> Don't know. Now you got me doubting myself. Um, one of the disciples, We, I'm, there's a 1 in 12 chance that it's Thomas. There's a 1 in 12 chance that it's Thomas. Anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, like one of them is like meditating under a tree when, when Jesus kind of uh, sees him, in, you know, in, in his vision almost. Um there's a couple of other characters that meditate, and, and, and you just kind of see the story of them meditating. Uh, but you see a lot of the Psalms talk about people getting away with God for the purpose of, of filling themselves up with, with what He wants for them to do. So we have the principle of meditation in Scripture. Now here's the problem. Nowhere in Scripture are you going to find where it just says, all right, you know, like Jesus, for example. Uh, Jesus teaches us how to pray. All right, well, when you pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it. Like, like Jesus, like you have this like structure for prayer that Jesus gives his disciples. You really don't see that with, with meditation. With meditation, you see something a little bit different where it's just like, hey, here's the, the principle. And we're kind of left to figure it out. And in America, that's re really, like, really, really hard. 
Why? Because we're constantly filled with something else. Constantly. I'm, I'm the worst about it. I can't stand driving without something going on. And nine times out of the ten, like I'm listening, I'm, I'm, it's like an audio book or it's some you know, theology podcast when I'm trying to learn something new. Every once in a while I listen to Stephen A. Smith talk trash about the Cowboys. But I mean like like I'm always trying to to like just have something going in the background because I've been trained to do that from my, my earliest age. My earliest age, excuse me. Um, and we've all kind of been trained to do that, like to have something something going with our with our mind. Silence is really hard for a lot of people. Not everybody. There's probably some of you in this room that silence is very easy for. And I covet you. Uh, it is not easy for me whatsoever. Um, a lot of my silence I'll experience in the year is in a, in a deer stand until the crack of a rifle breaks the silence and it's like, boom, praise God. And so, you know, we're, we're moving on from that point. Um, so si- silence is, is a part of it and, and we, we don't really have a silent culture. We have a busy culture. Um, people in our culture... You know, they talk about meditation, but when they do talk about meditation, they're talking about from the Eastern sense of it. So if you were to rewind the clock back 2,000 years and you were to go to a, a 12-year-old boy or a 12, 12-year-old girl and be like, hey, like, you know what meditation is? I'd be like, no, duh. Like, it, was, it was a part of life. It was just a part of that culture. Uh, don't forget the Bible was written in the East. Um, and so as a result of that, like a lot of this Eastern meditation that we try to shun, probably some of these you know, early apostles and folks were actually practicing something similar to it but trying to be filled up. And so, yeah, like meditation was just a way of life. For us, it's not a way of life. Uh, for us, it's something that you know, we, we sometimes accidentally stumble on or we have to come to something like this to, to kind of get some instruction about it. And so Christians have essentially practiced four types of meditation throughout the last 2,000 years. There might be more, but there's like four like surefire ways that, that people meditate. And... The, even even the problem with that is like within that those four ways there's so many different branches that you can you can practice meditation that it, it can become very difficult very quick. So we're going to talk about those four things tonight. Uh, we're going to start with the easiest and then build up to the hardest. Okay. Now before we 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 get in with this, there's one thing that I, that I have to say. This is the toughest part about meditation for me. For me. If you want to hear from God, and if I want to hear from God, there has to be, and I'm going to say, I'm going to, use, I'm going to, I'm going to soften the blow here, and, and maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, um, but there has to be some level of surrender going into that meditation. Um, I think oftentimes there needs to be, you know, complete surrender, but Golly, that's just so hard. I, I, I don't even know if complete surrender is possible in this life. I, I'm not sure. Um, we'll talk about that in a few weeks. But there has to be some level of surrender and obedience going into our meditation if we want to hear from God. Why? Because we ain't fooling nobody when we get quiet, right? Like, like I can fool you, maybe, but God knows my heart. God knows my thoughts. And... If I'm simply doing that to check a box and I have zero intentions of following God in something He may communicate to me, I don't think that we should expect Him to speak. I I really don't. In fact, there's plenty of Psalms that talk about that. So one of the things I struggle so hard with is just, because my my mind, I don't know if y'all are like me, I overthink. I, I overthink if I'm an overthinker. Um, and like, yeah, you know, I'm like, there's a few times I'm like, am I, am I, I'm overthinking right now. Wait a minute, am I overthinking right now? Maybe I'm not overthinking right now, but I, I'm definitely overthinking. No, no, you know, like it's just this, this constant thing going on in my mind. And one of the things that's like a real struggle for me is like when I when I go into meditation, I'm just like, I start thinking about all the things God may call me to do that I don't want to do. Immediately, I'm just like, okay, so like before I do this, let's just try to let's try to surrender. What's all the things he might he might tell me to do right now? And so like I go into it, auto, like automatically assuming the worst, which is probably not the best practice. Um, and, and so I just kind of give you up. Maybe maybe I'm just like, man, that guy's got problems. I do. Um, so if, if this isn't helping anybody, then forgive me. This is just my time this year. Um, so you know, not, but but I do. I think that that's something that has helped is is going to God prior to the meditation and prayer and saying, God. 
I don't know what you're going to say. Um, but I, I want to do it. My heart wants to do it. I just, not all of me is there yet. And so please help me. You know, like, like leave me alone. Guide me. And um, if I have enough time, I'll, I'll tell you a story about that when we, when we get done. But the first way that we see Christians meditating is, is on Scripture. All right? First way, and, and that's by far the easiest way to, to meditate. And so this is just a, a pattern that, um, and I'm going to say this, this is my favorite pattern that I got from something. Everything that you're about to see, I, I did not originate with any of this. I've practiced all of it, but none of this like came from me. Um, this right here was from Richard Foster. And, and in fact, uh, maybe I'll tell you, I'll try to tell you where I, I kind of got the different stuff from. But Richard Foster, he, he had a book called um, Turds. That wasn't the book. Yeah. It is Sanctuary for the Soul. Sanctuary for the Soul is the name of the book. Outstanding book. It's like yay big. It'll take you a week to read it. Very, very good book on meditation. Uh, I would encourage y'all to, to check that out. Um, but in it, he talks about him, him meditating on Scripture uh, in, in one of the portions. So read the passage. All right, whatever passage it may be, read the passage. And on that first reading, I, I, t I tend to, to read through it pretty quickly. Like, I'm just kind of boom. And my goal with that first reading is I, I just want, I want to know what's going on, right? If it's a psalm, I just want to know what's going on. If it's a, if it's a story, even if, I have, if I've read the story a hundred times, I just want to read it one more time really quickly just so that way I can go, okay, this is everything that, that I'm going to encounter in this particular text. Um, when I, I'm talking about doing this, uh, for starters, I would say probably... Don't go more than a unit of Scripture at a time. What is a unit of Scripture? Our Bibles have done a really good service for us. 99% uh, of all English Bibles are going to have a heading, and then passages of Scripture, and then another heading. We inserted those headings into the Bible. That, that was not a part of the original text. But from like a heading to a heading is, like, is typically one unit of Scripture. And so if you, when you're practicing this for like the first time, I would say just stick with a unit of Scripture. Uh, don't don't try to go like man. I'm about to I'm about to knock out ten chapters today. We're going through the entire book of Isaiah. Here we go. Um, easy there, big fella. Just bring it down. Bring it down a little bit. One unit at a time. Um, Reread the passage. This time I'm going slow. All right. I'm, I'm I'm trying to just like really process, and I'm looking at anything that stands off the page at me. I may not know why it stands off the page at me, but if it but if I read it, I'm just like, okay. It could be it could be shocking. There's some shocking things in Scripture. It could, be, um, it could be something that I have questions about. It could be something that is encouraging to me. It could be something that is convicting to me. This is not the time for me to process why I'm highlighting. This is just the time for me to say, like, hey, if it stands off the page, I'm highlighting it. Repetitive. Do what? Repetitive. Yes, yeah. So then we get into the, the third stage, and I go back and I only reread the highlighted portions. Um, and so now I've, I've taken that unit... And I may have it narrowed down to five words, or I may have it narrowed down to five different highlights, or five different uh, uh, verses, or something along those lines, five different phrases. That's okay. Um, I would say, if you're getting started, sometimes less is more with the highlight. Um, so maybe really, it really needs to stand off the page at you as, you, as you're highlighting, uh, especially as you get started. Um, so then you go back and you read even more slowly those highlighted portions, just one at a time, and you spend some time thinking about this question. Why did I highlight this? What was it about this that made that it just stood off the page? I highlighted it. It's there for a reason. The Holy Spirit tugged my heart for some reason, tugged my mind for some reason, and now I'm just thinking about it. Um, some people do really well journaling during this time. Some people do really well just sitting in silence trying to process. Uh, I think either way can be good depending on the kind of person that you are. I think that you can journal through your meditation. I think that you can, you can just sit in silence during your meditation. But you're answering the question when you go back to the highlighted portions, why did I highlight this? What is so important about it? And then at the end of it, you, kinda, you should have, if you're journaling, and by the way, if I'm, if I'm just going to go ahead and be transparent, I think that journaling is going to be a very positive thing for everybody in the room. Uh, I know for some of us men, we're like, man, journal. Like, you want me to keep a diary? Well, dude, like, let's just be honest really quickly. Um, if King David walked into this room right now and had beef with us, all right, uh, he could kill us all. Um, homie was 
a man of men and was a, was a beast, right? Um, and we have his Psalms. Uh, that was his journal, all right? So I mean, like, if, if anybody needs a, a, a something you know, to, to be like, okay, well, why do I need to be keeping a journal? Because one of the most manly men of history uh, kept a journal. So like, it's, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing. Um, so you know, at the end of it, you might just want to consider, hey, is there any general themes that are going on here in this meditation? Um, and there may not be. It may be spread out, and that's okay. But is there something that maybe is bringing all the stuff together? And, and you kind of focus in on that. And, and oftentimes when you do that, you're going to say, okay, this is God's will for me today. This was God's will for me in this passage. This is God's will for me today. And I need to go and step forward in obedience. Any questions about meditating on Scripture before we, before we move on? I would highly, highly, highly emphasize start here. Start here before you go anywhere else. Um, so any, any questions about any of that before we go? Yeah. So how is this different from the praying of a scripture? Not much different. The, the, the prayer, essentially, you're just you're adding the, the final part of it. So, um, yeah, you, you went through it last year. So Rebecca's going to be referencing something that we actually talk about, I think, next week. It's either next week or the week after. Um, so, yeah, like one of the cool things about this right here is that you can incorporate prayer into this really well uh, because you're going to have a very clear pattern of, of prayer. Afterwards. Yeah, good question. Skipping ahead there, it's all right. <laughs> Anybody else? Meditating on the Psalms can be very helpful. Very helpful. And that can also be helpful when we talk about prayer, like praying too. So if you're like, okay, well, where do I start in the Bible? Psalm chapter 1 is a great place to start. Uh, just go all the way through. All, uh, golly, how many Psalms are there? 130? 150. There's 150 Psalms. Man, that could be wrong too. There's somewhere around 130 to 150. So, uh, yeah, you know, you got 150 days of meditation that you can you can rock with there. And by the way, like Psalm 119, is there 150? 150? Psalm 119, like when I got to Psalm 119, I think it took me. Psalm 119. Yeah, it took a while. It took a while. I, I, it was it took a long time actually. So you got a lot there. Yeah. No, with no, no, everyone has a hectic lifestyle. As a general rule of thumb, how long should we start off with? With this? Yeah, with meditating. If you took this pattern right here, so with this right here, you're actually you're doing a lot of things at the same time, and we're going to talk about how you can incorporate prayer into it next week. You're reading your Bible, so there's Bible study involved. Uh, you can incorporate prayer if you if you started with some with a unit of scripture at a time, a unit of scripture at a time. I think that you can have a really good Bible reading. Meditation and prayer, fifteen minutes. Um, I think that if you, I think that you could have an excellent one in thirty minutes. And I know that, like, so so there was a guy one time, um, a guy that I really like too, by the way. I think I think he's great in, in most of the things that he says. But me and a buddy were talking to him, and uh, he was talking about like quiet time. And, and he said, and we were just saying, like, what what is like a good? We were we were both young. Like, what does a good quiet time need to look like? And he's like, oh, well, you know, time isn't that, that isn't that important. But I mean, if you only have a quiet time for twenty minutes, that's just not good. And we're like, well, you just said time's not important. Now, and I'll push back against what what he said there. Like, I think that there are some people who have very hectic schedules, and I think that there are some people, myself included, not too long ago. I mean, it was only about probably. Courtney, you could probably tell maybe three years ago, two years ago, when I really like my, my prayer time and my meditative life kind of kind of started getting better. I sucked. I mean, I was I was the Bible reading only guy forever. Um, and so I think that like like so just to give you an example, like when I really started trying to enhance my prayer life, 15 minutes, and I was like, we're just gonna put a timer on it, you know. And so I think that when you're when you're doing meditation, I don't think there's anything wrong with you setting a timer. Um, and trying to work through these different elements based on a timer. And so if you wanted to do, uh, and some of y'all, I, I don't know if, if anybody in this room, but there, there's definitely people that are always like, oh, you're only putting limits on God. It's like, well, here's the deal. I've been in the weight room. Before. I know it doesn't look like that, but I have been in the weight room. Um, and I've been in a weight room, and uh, I have seen the people walk into the weight room with like a stopwatch and like a journal and like their headphones on, and, you know, you're just like, you know, coming in here with a journal. What are you going to do with your, your journal and your stopwatch? And then they get a lot of work done in, in a very short amount of time, right? It's a discipline. 
And so I think that like as we try to discipline ourselves, it's okay to say, hey, I, I've got 15 minutes, so I've got a 15 minute time. All right, at five minutes, I, I need to be at, at five minutes. I need to be here, you know. And so I can spend minute five through ten, kind of just meditating on the highlighted portions and things like that. And then I can spend minutes ten through fifteen praying about about those things. And boom, I've read my Bible, I've meditated on the Scripture, and and, I, and I've spent some time in prayer. And it'd probably be a really good fifteen minutes. Now, what this is what happens with everybody, everybody. You do that for. Three weeks. Um, and there actually is a reason I just said three weeks. I almost said six, but there's a reason I said three. Um, you do that for three weeks, and you're going to be like, I have to have more time. I, I, need, I need 20 minutes. I need 25 minutes. You know, I need 30 minutes, and, or whatever, whatever the time is going to be for you. But just start, start somewhere that you, can, that you can work with, and then, and then see what happens from there. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on? Okay. Second way, meditation on creation. I got some details of this in your notes, so that way if you if you miss anything, it's okay. Probably uh, there's not a ton of details in there about meditation on creation, but there, there is some stuff. So when we meditate on creation, what we're doing is trying to put ourselves in that place where we are observing what God has made and how God has revealed himself in what he has made. Right? If everything that God made was good and God kind of put his stamp on everything. Now, we, we are the only beings on this planet that have physical bodies that are made in his image. Um, however, everything in creation has some level of God's creativity, his character, his nature kind of in, implanted on it in some way. And sometimes it's just incredible to observe uh, how how nature works. And the way that we do that is we get out in nature. Sometimes people go for walks. That's okay. Um, sometimes people in a deer stand and they're observing things. Sometimes people are, uh, you know, but, but, you know, focusing in on some element of nature. I'll give you like a kind of a, a more radical one. I was, um, I used to raise, I say, I, that's, that's a lie. I, I'm sorry. I almost lied. Um, I needed a tax write-off, and so a guy put bees on my property for me to get a tax write-off. And every once in a while, I would help him until I started getting allergic to bee stings, um, which is really the worst, but that's okay. Y'all have some, 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 oh, okay. you, got, you got some of that going on? <laughs> Do what? Oh, yeah, no, I didn't mean to. Yeah, you didn't mean to point, yeah. So, um... Anyways, I'm with my I'm with my B guy one day. His name is Bo Jackson. Um, y'all might know Bo. Um, not the football player, but uh, the baseball player. Not, not the baseball player either. The, the the this is the Bo Jackson. Anyways, um, so Bo is telling me about the the beauty of bees. I'm just like, man, oh, where is this about to go? Because you know, I'm not a bee. I like the honey, and that's about it. But um, if you ever get stung by a bee. You're, you're essentially getting stung by an old bee. This is Bo telling me. All right, he could be lying. But I think Bo knows the stuff. Bo knows. Um, if y'all don't know who Bo Jackson is, like the football. Is, is anybody catching up with these references? Okay, all right. Thank you. I'm just making all sure. The, the gray hairs I thought that was I thought that was funny. I thought, I thought the Bo knows. I, like I need y'all to give me more affirmation when I do something. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Did it just reveal my pride here? Yeah. Um, or, or insecurities? I'm not sure which one. Or both. Um, now I'm just talking to myself. Um, I gotta move on. Where were we at? Bees. Bees. Oh, bees. bees. Okay. So if you ever get stung by a bee, the likelihood of you getting stung by a young bee is like slim to none. Uh, young bees have jobs that like require strength and stamina. A lot of them will go out, fly, pollinate, stuff like that. If you ever get stung by a bee, it's probably a very old bee. And you're probably very close to the hive. And uh, essentially what Bo told me is that in a bee's life cycle, they go through these stages to where like as their bodies change and stuff like that, they realize that they're limited. And so the old bees, as they get to the place of, of that they're about to die, they, they go towards the outside of the beehive. So that way they can protect the beehive from predators. Now, by protecting the beehive, they're giving their life. They're sacrificing their life 
for the beehive, knowing that, hey, I've, heard, I've, I've lived my life. I've done my job. Now my, my, the best thing I can do is sacrifice myself for the sake of the, of the family here. And I, I, that like blew me away because I was like, oh my gosh, that is exactly what it's, it ought to look like in church, right? Like the older somebody gets, I, like I know that like there, there is like kind of, man, this is, so, is going to sound so bad because I'm a young person. I'm committed. I'm going. Um, but, you know, like, like for, for so many people, like, it, like there's some kind of this mantra of like, well, you know, the older somebody gets, the more we, we should cater to them. When, like, the reality is that the older somebody gets, like, like, the more that they sacrifice. Like, it's their responsibility. Like, hey, what can I give up for the family here? What can I do? Because, like, you know, my, my time is almost done. What is my legacy going to be? Is my legacy going to be holding on to the, to the thing that I really wanted, or is it going to be letting go and empowering other people? Is it going to be letting go and protecting the family in whatever way that protection looks like? Is it going to be letting go and sacrificing my wants, my needs, my desires for the sake of the family? I thought that was so cool. And by the way, I say that because we do have people at this church that that's exactly how they act. Like they, they, they get to that place and they're just like, it's not, it's not about me. Anymore, like I, I kind of had my time, and I was in the thick of everything. Now it's my job to sacrifice my wants, needs, and desires for the sake of the church and, and the greater needs of the family. Um, I, I just think I think that that was so cool. But like we get to those places and those understandings of how God is and how He works and how He wants things to work by observing nature, and we have to spend time in nature, and we have to spend time kind of thinking on those things. Any thoughts, questions, comments? There, bees, fascinating. All right. Um, Meditation on the times. Meditation on the times. It's exactly what it sounds like. You look at what's going on, and I think like Richard Foster even talked about like sometimes like having a newspaper in hand as you as you meditate on the times. But you're meditating on the times, and you're saying, "Hey, what's going on? Why is it going on? What is the enemy's role in this? What is God trying to want to see happen in this? And how can I join God's team?" In, in seeing all these things come to pass, right? Um, I don't have any like great examples right now. The last time that I taught this class, there was, uh, at that point in time, there was two high school students killed at Jacksonville to, to gun violence. Not at the high school, but in the, in the community. Two high school students were killed in the community. Uh, another high school student did one of the shootings, and so he'll, he'll be in prison the rest of his life and, and all that stuff. So it was, it was like, you look at a town like a 4A school district, it's like, wow, that is some crazy stuff. Like, this doesn't happen. In, in most places where you see this kind of violence. And and it did. Like, I, I had to spend some time, and I think that we all should have, to some degree, spend some time thinking about, okay, well, why is this happening? Is there any way that I'm complicit in it by either staying silent when I should give my voice or giving my voice when I should stay silent um, or not giving up my time, money, efforts when I should or maybe giving up my time, money, and efforts when I shouldn't and things like that. So we got to process through that. We got to process what's going on. And we got to say, okay, God, what are you wanting to do here? Clearly the enemy is working. So if the enemy's working, you're probably doing something huge. How can, how can I join your team? And we just meditate and we process through that by asking those types of questions as we consider what's going on around us. Um, man, what, what, well, heck, I don't know why I didn't think about this. As we look at the society right now, um, I don't know if y'all knew this, but, you know, we're about to have a presidential election and, you know, everybody is on the same page. Everybody's good and happy with each other. There's no division um, and uh, stuff like that, right? We, we know better. So, like, we ought to, as Christians, be thinking, hey, how did we get here? How did we get here? When I think about my vote, is my vote going to honor God in the best possible way? Spend time meditating on that. Um, how can I uplift people who feel like they're oppressed, whether they're oppressed or not? That's not that's not my my thing to like try to work through that. But maybe they're feeling oppressed, and so maybe it's like, okay, well, how can I help? Is a rebuke needed? Is encouragement needed? Is are my are my hands and feet needed to, to help this situation? Um, do we need to condemn the situation? Do we need to uplift the situation? Like, there's so many factors that go into to any given moment in, in time, and we, and we have to just spend some time thinking about those things from time to time. Uh, I would say of the, the four ways of meditation, I would say probably practice this one the least, but like it, it would be good maybe to schedule. I don't do this. I'm just giving. I'm, I'm telling you all what to do. 
I just don't want to do it. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I need to. I'm telling you this because I need to do it. About every three to four months, it, it wouldn't be bad just to sit down and be like, hey, take inventory. What's happened? What is God doing? Where is the enemy putting pressure? What is he doing? And, and, and where can I join God? Um, some of y'all might say, well, hey, man, we need to do it once a month. Man, great. Like, do it once a month. Uh, but I would say, like, at least every three to four months, try to take some time to meditate on the, on the times. Any questions, comments there? Okay, let's get to the one. Uh, centering down. All right. Got a love-hate relationship with this one. So this is by far the hardest form of meditation. Um, there are going to be some people probably in this room that you start this this week. I've been practicing this for... I, 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 I've done it in years past, but I've been, I've been practicing this consistently for about seven or eight months now. And there's some of you that just because of like how you're designed, you could start today and by the end of the week, you're going to, you're going to be significantly better at this than, than I am um, for any, any number of reasons. This is difficult. This is difficult for me, though, and it may be difficult for you because I think it requires the most attention, the most uh, help, and, and probably the most biblical knowledge, too, if we're, if we're just being honest. Centering down is the idea of I'm going to empty my mind, and I'm just going to sit, and I'm going to listen and I'm going to see if God has anything for me. And it sounds the most mystical. It sounds the most weird and all the other things. Uh, it sounds the most Eastern, but it is a practice that Christians have done for 2,000 years. Um, one guy I heard recently, he called it, uh, he either called it throne time or chair time. Uh, but he said that like the way he practices it is he sets a 15-minute timer, uh, sits down, so, so I was, we'll, we'll get to some of the details about this in a second, but you know, he sits down and then his goal is to imagine God on his throne as best as he can and, and just see if God has anything to say to him. Um, the Bible app, you version. So they have the verse of the day and then underneath that they have, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Do what? Yeah, it's the reflection. The reflection time. So the reflection time actually walks you through a little bit of centering down. Um, and I would say it actually does a pretty dang good job. Um, but again, it's hard. It's difficult. It requires the most accountability. It requires the most sharing things with other people, and that can be uncomfortable. It requires the most biblical knowledge, and so on and so forth. So here's a couple things about centering down that like just I'm going to tell you the things that I've learned um, from other people that have helped me. Number one, breathing exercises work really well when you're starting. So, um, like, um, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down. Um, you know, like, I, I think I actually have a slide for this. Yeah, so one of the ways that you call this, it, they call it palms up, palms down. Palms up, palms down. So this is, this is the way I practice it the most. Um, sit down, I've got my place. I know, I know where I'm at every time I, I meditate. Like, I, I'm not... Tonight, I know that I'm going to be meditating tomorrow morning. I know that I'm going to be pr trying centering down tomorrow morning, and I and I know exactly where I'm going to be. Don't wake up tomorrow morning and then be like, okay, well, where, where do I, let me let me look around and do this. It takes it takes some like prep <laughs> um, because you don't want your mind on anything else. Uh, you want to try to have as clear a mind as you possibly can. So I've got my office. I've got my little window. Uh, I've got some squirrels that play outside the window from time to time. I really like those. There's some birds. There's a little road runner every once in a while. It keeps me in touch with nature. Anyways, uh, feet flat. Um, you know, you don't have to be like, you know, at attention military style. But I would say, you know, have, have a good posture about yourself um, and, you know, feet flat on the ground. And so uh, first part of it, just start with some breathing. All right. Uh, if y'all have never done breathing exercises, uh, breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. Breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth, and kind of pause in there. And so, like, I, I would say, like, a decent practice would be um, maybe, like, breathe in and out, like, three times. Like, um, I have had to start carrying Kleenexes with me because I'm like, man, my nose is so stopped up. So, you know, we got we to gotta have, the, have that there. Um, and then I might try it a little bit more. And, and the next time, the next three times that I'm trying it, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm breathing in thinking like, okay, I, I'm, 
I'm breathing in. <laughs> it's going to sound weird. I told you. This is the strangest. Um, I'm breathing in God's goodness. I'm breathing in God's love. I'm letting go of my fear as I breathe out. You know, just kind of like process through those things. Um, you're not literally breathing in God's goodness. God is everywhere. He's already He's already with you. Um, so it ain't like, you know, if you've got a snotty nose that morning, you're, you're not going to miss God. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, do some breathing exercises to, to begin with. That just kind of helps us clear our mind. And then for me, what I try to do, in fact, I've got a passage right now, Psalm 73, that is really pivotal in my life. Um, the passage I memorized starts off, it says, Nevertheless, I'm continually with you. Uh, you hold my right hand. Uh, you guide me with your counsels. And afterwards, you will receive me into glory. Uh, whom have I in heaven but you? And there's nothing on earth I desire besides you. Uh, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And then the passage goes on. Um, and so like that first part, like nevertheless, I'm continually with you. That's David. I'm pretty sure David wrote that song. That's David talking to God. He's talking about how big of a punk he is. And then he's like, but nevertheless, I'm, I'm like, I'm with you. Like, I'm here. And it's good for me. It's good for me to just remember that. Nevertheless, whatever happened the day before, whatever's happening now, nevertheless, I'm continually with you. And then, uh, and then that passage, that part where it says, and you hold me by my right hand. And so for me, as I'm envisioning things and I'm trying to use my imagination, um, I envision God's holy hand, but, you know, holy and holy, right? Uh, the... Um, do what? Double on Roger. Multiple meetings. That's right. Yep, yep. The W W H O. Wait. Hmm. I don't know how. You, anyways. <laughs> no, W H O. That would be like whole, like a like a whole apple, not an apple slice. Anyways. Yeah. So like for me, I'm I'm envisioning that 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 nail scarred hand holding my right hand. Um, doing my best to do that. Envisioning. I, I try to envision God. That doesn't work for me. I try really hard. It's just. And you know what? It actually was working for me for a while, but right now it's just, it's just not working for me. The, you know, kind of imagining God's hand, uh, imagining his wounds on his back, that, you know, that, that is something that has had an impact on me. Um, but I, as, as I start to imagine that, I'm, I'm just like, okay, God, like, what are the things that I am holding on to that are maybe keeping me from surrender? Now, I don't say it out loud, but I'm just like, okay, fear. Like, I'm afraid of blank. And when I, when I think that, I, I just say palms down, and I let go. Like, I, I'm literally, I'm initiating my body there. <laughs> Golly, I feel like I'm, like I'm teaching a yoga class. I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, my hands are, are closed, and I'll say, okay, you know, God, my, my fear. Um, and then I'll say out loud, palms down. I'll open up my palms. Um, and then, you know, after I kind of rest in that for a second, I'll start thinking through the next thing. And after I've done that two or three times, I flip my palms to open, and I'll say, God, like, I... Whatever it is, I mean, today, I mean, I'll tell y'all what I said today if I can remember it. Yesterday, Yesterday's meditation was really hard for me, and, and I think I know why. I, I think there were some things I was holding on to and not really surrendering, um, and it, just, it was just like, a, it was just a bad meditation, um, and so like today, like I didn't, I didn't, I'll just be honest, like I didn't really want to know God's will. I was just like, God, can you just tell me what you think about me? And that was my palms up. Like, yeah, I was like, God, tell me, tell me what you think about me and, and help me to obey you. And uh, sure enough, I think he did. And so, um, you know, but, but you know, I just rest there for the remainder of the time, you know, with my, my palms open. Um, right now, I, I did, I started off doing that for five minutes just of the silence. Um, I bumped that up to 10 minutes. Then I was, I was like, man, I'm, I'm a professional meditator. So I went to 15 I did that for a while. I was like, you know what? It's time to go back to 10. And so I'm, I'm, I'm back to 10 now. And that kind of brings me to something really quickly. Yep, well, I don't even know if I have a marker for it. J curve, y'all you know like what a J looks like? The only man J. Right. Um, you know, the J curve on, on most things, like you, you start at a place. Here, here's the J. Here you go. Shoulder there. Yeah, the J. Um, you start at a place, and it's and it's like a good place. Like you're like, man, I'm getting something out of this. Um, and then after a while, because like some some of the J's don't they have the little? No, that goes up to never mind. Anyways, you get to that place, and you're, you're thinking to yourself, hey, then I'm, I'm doing all right. And then you kind of start going down. You're like, what the heck is going on? And then you get down to this little valley, where you're like, this sucks. 
and I'm about to quit. That's where I'm at right now with my meditation life. I'm just going to go ahead and let y'all know. So I'm really hoping that we get out of the valley really soon. But like that's how meditation works. Like everybody who's ever practiced meditation will tell you, like, hey, you're gonna. It's, it's on a J curve, and you're kind of doing this, you're doing this, and then eventually you're going to get back to where you started. And there's a lot of peace, and there's a lot of hope. And 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 then you, you just kind of the goal is to just keep showing up for it, and you keep progressing in it as it as it goes. So. Um, if you're going to try the centering down, um, and, and, I, and I said that it's the most difficult, it's, it's certainly the most difficult for me. I don't want anybody to think like, hey, I can't try. Like, no, go try. It. Like, go try. It. But just know that you, you might be here, or you may not even, I mean, it might just be an L. You know, like you might end up just like with an L curve, right? You're just like, this is so terrible, and I'm, and I'm here, and I'm, I'm in the valley with this. But with this, with meditation, you've got to keep showing up for it. You got to keep showing up for it. So I'll confess to you guys one of the reasons why I'm in the spot that I'm in right now. When I kind of got to the bottom of my curve, um, I became very inconsistent with it. I mean, I was like six, seven months, like every day, kind of having this time of meditation and stuff like that. And then I, I got to that curve, and I was just like, "Golly, this is just sucking. I'm not liking this. I don't like the. I just don't like it." And so, you know, it went from maybe six, seven days a week to to three days a week or something like that. And I saw real steps backwards at that time. And so I think that's part of my problem right now is just the fact that I'm, you know, I, I, I kind of took some time off, so to speak. Um, and I'm trying to get, you know, I'm in the process of kind of getting back with it right now. So, um, man, I feel like that was not very helpful at all. So do y'all have any questions on the, on the centering down, on the centering down part? Has anybody got anything? Y'all got to have some questions about I know the first time I heard that, I was just like, what? What do we got? I think it is helpful just because we're not all the same. I think uh, for me, like, the hanging out in creation, that was, yeah. that was always super easy. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but then the Bible, uh, spending time at work, that was really hard. Yeah. And some people, and, and, and that's just how some people are wired. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to feel like, oh man, I'm a bad Christian because like to spend the time in the Word becomes is, is, is a little unnatural. And it, when you brought the, the Bible out, that was nice because it's like it gives you that little ticker. Yeah. Oh, you missed today. Good job. Here's a little guilt trip. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's been helpful to like do that more. Yeah. Everybody's different, and, and here's the deal. I more than likely, um, okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to raise your hand if if one of the four types of meditation. You don't have to say which one. If one of the four types of meditation kind of kind of clicked with you, whether you're like, hey, I think I can do that. All right. Okay. It's most everybody. So, you know, I, I bet we could probably go around the room. Uh, who, who's going to be the Bible person? That that just be the most natural way. Okay. All right, who's going to be the nature person? Okay. Uh, who's going to be meditating on the times person? Okay. Who's the one you said don't focus on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I probably shouldn't have said that, though, Daniel. Oh, no, I'll still. Well, no, I mean, but honestly, like, I, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm looking at you, knowing your story, knowing your background, and I'm like, yeah, of course God would use you the most out of probably everybody in this room to help with some of that stuff, just because of like you know, you probably you probably have a, a really solid foot with some of those folks that that need that. Um, so yeah, that, that was foolish. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said that. I feel uh, like it comes to in like it's like an as needed like thing. Like I feel like when like the pandemic was happening and everyone was just like, what is going on? You know, like yeah. that was probably there was probably a lot more people practicing meditating on the times regularly, just mm -hmm. being like. We've got to, we've got to figure this out. Like we've got to come yeah. together. But right, you know, right, other than the election, and you know, you can always go down any rabbit hole and find something wrong. But like, at least we're out of that, you know. And yeah. like, any time there's been like a huge political thing or wartime or whatever, like you're definitely just going to spend more time, like. Thank you, well, Tom. I think that's a good word. I think that's a very good word. So y'all, y'all erase that. So maybe in November we'll all be like. What is happening? <laughs> God, we gotta get, have a meditation <laughs> session. We gotta get together. Yeah. So, so, so with meditating on the times, I can at least for me. Mm -hmm. It once I get the answer, the biggest issue is going to be how can I follow through with that. 
because with the times, the biggest, I know with me, my biggest thing is going to be pride. Like, like pride's going to be the biggest thing because I'm going to think, no, I'm right. Whoever's going to say, oh, no, you're wrong. And yeah. trying to like... I think, I think the point of meditation, though, yeah. is that if you take the time to stop and listen, God is going to direct the path. Mm-hmm. Now, he may not do it. One of the things, so... Um, If, y'all got, if, any, if there's any John Mark Comer fans in the room, uh, I would say, you know, John Mark, I mean, I, I hesitate to like, to, to challenge the guy on anything. He's clearly brilliant and he's clearly practicing these things in ways that are, are so, so far advanced from where I'm at. But, but one of the things about meditation I think we got to be very careful of is like hearing something and then just assuming, like, okay, well, that's the voice of God, and now I, I, I move forward. I will tell y'all from experience that, like, in the same week, I have heard two opposing things in meditation. And that's actually when I started taking a journal of the meditations and saying, like, okay, what, what am I hearing? What am I feeling? What, what are the thoughts that keep coming up? Um, because it was good to get those things on paper. And, and I do think that there's going to be some things that God clearly speaks at a certain time, but it's going to take us time to understand exactly that was the voice of God. This is exactly what he wants me to do, and this is how he wants me to do it. And so I, I think that, but like the point of meditation is that you would get to that conclusion with the right time. The biggest thing is you've got to keep showing up for it to allow God to, to speak in that way. And I think that's the toughest thing for most Christians is most Christians want the immediate thing it's going to launch us right here, right now. Um, whereas, like, there, there are some things in life that are nuanced that we, that, we have to, that we have to process through a little bit. And we may come back. By the way, I mean, there was a, I had a time meditating back last, oh, man, when was it? Uh, I, man, it might have even been, like, last June, like, like, not, like, June 2023, and I felt like God like spoke to me something so clearly. I was like, man, I don't know. I don't want to do that. So I had that in my mind. But I wasn't sure either. And uh, six months, or not six months, f- four months down the road, like, like I'm, I'm driving, praying for clarity about this one specific thing. And God just like, he, he sent a sign. Like it was no longer like a whisper. It was like, there, there is a, there's a megaphone in front of you. It's time to listen. And I was like, okay, like, um, that, that's, I, I get it now, and and I, and I walked, I walked forward in, in in the way that he wanted me to. But it did, it did take me time to bring some clarity. That wasn't a very good example because of how that worked out. But, but even I, since I, I, then, I look at it as like there, there are still things that like have taken me time. There was one time, uh, you know, I, I told, I mean, I feel like I'm talking about this all the time now. I'm not trying to be like. Like, hey, guys, look at me. I'm going to counseling. Um, but I have talked about some. I asked God clearly. I was like, God, I need you to tell me which counselor, like the name of the counselor that you want me to go to. And, uh, and I was meditating. And a guy came to me immediately, like a, a, a guy that, that I knew. And I was just like, there's no way that's the guy. You know, like this was like, I was like, there's zero chances this is the guy. Um, this is Kobe being Kobe. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, the first thought that comes to my mind. And I keep meditating, keep meditating. And I'm like, okay, I'm not sure. But like, there was just always that, that, that voice in the back of my mind. Well, Mike, one day we're driving down the road. I'm just like, Mike, I think, I think it's time for me to go see some counselor. I, I'm, he's like, dude, Kobe, that's a great idea. Uh, reach out to Texas Baptist. They'll hook you up with a counselor, and they'll, they'll even pay for some of it. I was like, okay, cool. Well, I reach out to Texas Baptist. They sent me a list with three names. The first guy on the on the list was the guy that I thought about the first time that I asked God for you know for that meditation. But it did like it did take me time. Like I don't I don't necessarily know that I was being disobedient. It just took some time for that to develop out. You know, does that make sense? Um, so, anyways, uh. I'll just say one of the things that helps with like specifically meditating is like it is a part of scripture, but like finding. A characteristic of God and like yes. meditating on that, like yes. whatever it, whatever I need at that minute, if it's counsel, if it's you know comfort, if it's whatever, and just finding different scriptures or different examples of that characteristic of Him, and just like no, like just telling myself like 
you know, this just over and over because, you know, sometimes you need different things, but just yeah. there's so many just finding different. I have a um, app recommendation too. It's called Dwell, and it's yes, it's like guided meditation almost. Like yeah. it's like you have to pay for that. If you do, you like to pay for it once. I, th I think that there's a very small fee attached <laughs> um, to that. But okay. it sends you something every every morning that says like, "This is your med or it doesn't say it doesn't use the word meditation. I don't think, but it has a um, scripture and then just sort of like a, I mean, it's like maybe four to seven minutes or so. Yeah. But you're just listening and then it walks you through like, close your eyes and breathe in this and breathe out this. And yeah. It's a good little. Entry. Yeah. And someone well, said, right. I use Abide. It's the same, similar. Abide? Abide. It's an app? It's, it's an app. Okay. It's guided meditation. It's been amazing. I love it. Okay, so you got it. It's about 15 minutes a day, though. But it does, it's, it has breathing with it, which yeah. helps me a lot. And then, um, like, it's just one scripture that they fo kind of focus on. And, yeah, it's been really good. And they also have nighttime meditations as well, which have been good for me, too, because sometimes my mind starts going yeah. crazy in the evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll just lay in bed and listen to it. And it just kind of, honestly, I usually fall asleep, yeah. which is my goal. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I mean, that's, that's my very goal good practice. to yeah. fall yeah. asleep. But I'm listening to God's word as well while I'm falling asleep. Yeah. So. so you got anyway. dwell, you got abide, you got the, the YouVersion Bible app um, has, has a, a guided reflection meditation time. Um, I can't think of any other resources off the top of my head. Um, so, yeah, those are good. Thank you all for sharing those. Um, yeah, any other thoughts, questions, comments that you want to add? Anything at all? Okay. Uh, when we come back next week, we're going to be talking about prayer. So we're not going to we're we're not going to have like a follow up session on meditation. This is what I would encourage y'all. I've, I've got kind of got y'all some. I say homework. Homework's a terrible word. These are just some suggested things that you may want to do as you follow up from this this one. Because I know if you like again, if you're anything like me, you're probably hearing some of this stuff that I'm saying, and you and you probably had the first thought that I did whenever I first started kind of studying meditation. Like this is the Pokiest stuff I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Um, so it, it does. It does take some time kind of getting used to it. But grabbing somebody in your life and letting them know, hey, I'm spending time in the morning meditating. And if you could, if you could pray for me, and if I could, if I could maybe bounce some ideas off of you from time to time, that would be very helpful. Grabbing that person and, and stuff like that, that, that would be very, very helpful as you kind of get it launched in this. I think that those apps, Dwell, Abide, YouVersion, really, really good. So uh, start somewhere. Start somewhere. Choose one of the four. Uh, whatever you think is going to be the best, the easiest for you, and rock and roll with it. So anyways, uh, let's pray. And we'll get out of here. Lord Jesus in heaven, thank you for tonight. Uh, and I pray for everybody in the room, myself included, that we would hear your voice and obey. Uh, that we would learn to hear your voice and obey. That we would not be scared of you, but that we would have a healthy reverence of you. Or that we would acknowledge that you are holy. And that you would fill us with your holiness as we come to you in the quiet, seeking to be filled up. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, amen.